This is the most advanced pick-a-click I have ever made. It uses the ESP32 C3 microprocessor and thus comes with a lot of useful benefits compared to my earlier versions in the Click family. Like in previous versions of the pick-a-click, I have chosen this button again because I just love the contrast between the cuteness of that PCB and this huge 12mm button. Oh, maybe you have already seen it. This PicoClick comes with an FPC connector which can turn this basic IoT button into a fully functional development board with tons of applications, but more on this later in the video. Let's take a step back first. Almost four years ago I have started to work on tiny devices which can be used to control different stuff in your smart home or the Internet of Things. The journey started with my so-called dash buttons. Simple ESP-based devices which uses a deep sleep functionality while waiting on a button press. After creating several different versions with it, I came to the conclusion that there is optimization potential and therefore I worked on a different, power-friendly solution. Started with the OctoClick, the so-called power latching circuit was born. It has the huge benefit that the buttons can be used in another way. It can handle a long, a short or a double press, just for example. All this wasn't possible with using the reset line of the MCU, which can only be used with a single button press. With the power latching circuit well tested, it was time to go smaller and so I worked on the first version of the PicoClick. Back then, the USB Type-C connector was only for charging the battery and not for programming the ESP8285. To program it, I had to use a pogo pin adapter and a USB to serial bridge. Next version included that bridge on the device itself and uses two buttons on the front to enable the programming mode and performing a reset. In the latest version, I exchanged the buttons with an automated reset circuit consisting of two transistors. By the way, all these versions use the ESP8285 microprocessor. Then I finally discovered the ESP32 C3, which changed almost everything for the PicoClick. First I created the C3T, which is the tiniest device I have built so far. Nevertheless, it has a few drawbacks. It doesn't include an embedded battery protection, so the external battery has to be equipped with one. Furthermore, it uses a GPIO for the latching circuit, involving a fast boot-up time and hence requires using the ESP IDF instead of the Arduino framework. Just being said, I really don't like the ESP IDF. Looking back to the PicoClick journey revealed that we have reached the most interesting point. The PicoClick C3 with the most advanced features I have learned in the last few years. Before I will step into the details, first let me show you how I built it. After I designed the board layout for a single PicoClick, I panelized them into a 2x3 grid and sent them off to PCBWay, which is also the sponsor of today's video. PCBWay is my first choice when it comes to PCB production service. But they are not only providing fast and cheap PCB production. In the last few weeks I tested their 3D printing service and I cannot believe how the parts turned out. If you want to see the results of a transparent resin printed PicoClick case, then I can recommend watching the video till the end. Thanks PCBWay for providing all these beautiful parts for the PicoClick project.
After I finished the PicoClick panel, it was time to build a few FPC adapters, which I also panelized into the same grid. These breakout boards make it easy to use the PicoClick as a development board to be used on a breadboard. It leads out the battery power supply, the switched 3.3 volt line, two pulled up GPIOs, which are great to hook up I2C devices, and the button line, which allows it to externally activate the PicoClick device. By the way, all the project files and images are available on my GitHub page, which is linked in the description. With a breakout board connected to the PicoClick, the device can be powered over two jumper cables and a voltage of 3.6 to 6 volts. Another way to power the PicoClick C3 is over the USB Type-C port. In doing so, you have to close the right soldering jumper on the button side of the device. The other soldering jumper on the left side is my so-called emergency boot jumper, which connects the boot strapping pin of the microcontroller to ground. Normally, the PicoClick will enter this boot mode automatically, but if the device will not respond on your computer, then this is the way to go. As the PicoClick is an IoT device, it is of course optimized to be used with a LiPo battery as well. It comes with an embedded battery protection as well as a LiPo charger which will indicate its charging state with a tiny LED next to the USB jack. If fully charged, the LED will turn off. The embedded battery protection is nice because it reduces the size of the battery and you can look up the details of it in the datasheet. Nevertheless, I was wondering how it performs compared to a standard protection which is normally included in those tiny battery packs. For me, the most interesting point is the current consumption, so I desoldered the protection board from the battery and hooked it up to my power profiler kit, which reveals that it consumes 3.45 microamps. Afterwards, I hooked up a PicoClick to my power profiler kit, which measures a current consumption of 74 milliamps while communicating over Wi Fi. 27 milliamps with Wi Fi disabled and only the LEDs fading, and just 2 microamps in off state, which is completely used by the battery protection. Almost half of a standard circuit. The best way to use PicoClick IoT buttons is to set them up as ESP Now devices. ESP Now is a Wi Fi protocol developed by Espressive itself, which focuses on a small payload and an access pointless structure, which make the complete communication ultra fast. In this example, I have configured two PicoClicks with ESP Now. The left device acts like the IoT button itself and the right one as a receiver or a bridge. The bridge don't need to be a PicoClick, it can be any ESP-based device. I implemented myself an answer-based communication between those two devices. If the bridge on the right side is powered on, the sender device on the left will receive an answer from the bridge and the LEDs will turn green. If it isn't powered on, the sender won't receive an answer and the LEDs will light up in red. Later, the receiver device can act as an MQTT bridge and transfer the ESP Now based messages into topics which can be used in any smart home solution. If you're interested in the setup for Home Assistant, for example, then please tell me in the comments below. As I already told you in the beginning of the video, the FPC connector of the PicoClick converts this tiny IoT button into a small development board. With two pulled up GPIOs on the connector, the device is able to communicate with other devices over I2C. Here I have connected an OLED display to the PicoClick, which prints a rising counter on it. Afterwards, I added a time of flight sensor and printed the output of the sensor to the display. Because this is still not enough, I added a light sensor to it, whose output is shown on the display as well. Last but not least, I found this beautiful 8x8 matrix, so I just hooked it up to the breadboard and added a few lines of code to the PicoClick. All this running on such a tiny device. Furthermore, the FPC connector leads out another useful pin, the button activation signal. Feeding this line with a voltage between 3.3V and the battery voltage will activate the PicoClick. This can be very useful when using signals of door sensors, read sensors or just external buttons. But the best is that it can be fired by interrupt pins of digital sensors, such as motion sensors, light sensors or time of flight sensors. As a first try I put a digital motion sensor to a breadboard and connected it to the PicoClick. This time I added a connection between the interrupt pin of the sensor and the button line of the PicoClick. Here we are, a motion activated PicoClick. Of course, these digital sensors and their interrupt pins can be configured for specific motions, such as a single tap, a double tap or a free fall for example. 
After playing around with the sensor for a while, I designed a tiny extension board with it and ordered the PCBs from PCBWay again. Additionally, I have added some tiny resin printed cases and two other extension boards to that order. This PCB is just 18 by 10 mm in total because it only needs the sensor itself and an ultra low power voltage regulator. Altogether, this board can be connected with one of those FPC cables. Before I will directly connect it to a Pico click, let me first measure the current consumption. I cannot believe it by myself. We are down to 11 microamps with an active sensor waiting on a tap. So, 2 microamps for the Pico click and just 9 microamps for the motion sensor. To hold both the PicoClick and the motion board in place, I printed a little case, cut an FPC cable to something about 10 mm length and put them into it. With a little bit of coding, I sent the motion values from one PicoClick to another and visualized them on the OLED display. Last but not least, I have to show you these awesome transparent cases printed by PCBWay. They have little snaps on both sides which will hold the top and the bottom part together. What a perfect fit! In the next video, I will show you the other extension boards. Maybe there will be even more of them. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.